Shin splints is when you get pain at the front of your shin. Normally this is one side, but sometimes it can be both, and it often feel like a tearing or a snapping type of pain. This will normally get worse when you exercise, such as going for a run or playing football, and will normally dramatically get better when you rest. This can be a very frustrating condition because it normally stops you from doing this sport or activity that you really want to do. But the good news is that there is something that you can do to resolve the problem. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. And at the end, I'm gonna go through an exercise that can be very helpful for this type of condition. So let's begin. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Hume. I'm a chiropractor currently based in Oxfordshire. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at shin splints. So the first question we need to ask is what causes it? Shin splints is essentially caused by one of two muscles. We've got the tibialis anterior and the tibialis posterior. You don't really need to know the names, but these are two muscles that are located in your lower leg, one at the front and one at the back. Shin splints occurs when one of these muscles becomes irritated where the muscle attaches onto the bone and it starts pulling on the outside portion of your bone. This is why therefore the pain can feel like a tearing or a snapping type of pain because essentially the, uh, the muscle is pulling so much on that bone that it's causing inflammation which then results in the pain. This is also why the more that you use the muscle, i.e. the more that you exercise, so if it's running or playing football, the worse it's just gonna keep getting once it's started getting painful. Because the more you're exercising, the more you're using the muscle, and therefore the more pulling and more tension there's gonna be. So then when you rest, then the tension then comes down, and therefore then the area can, the, the pressure in the area can then release, and the inflammation over time can start to come down. This is also why quite often it can feel tender in that area, particularly after you've exercised and you felt that pain. So what causes this pulling? Well, the pulling is as a result of an increased tension in the muscles of your lower and upper legs. The muscles don't work in isolation, but they work in chains. So we've got different chains, one at the back, one at the front. And if you get a tightness in one area, it tends to tighten the entire area. And this is essentially what happens. Quite often it's the muscles at the back of your leg that increase in their tension, which then causes the muscles at the front of the leg to also have to increase their tension. Otherwise, it's gonna change the position of your knee or your ankle. So therefore, you basically get two, two sets of muscles, front and back, that increase their tension. And then, then this, this is what causes the increase in that pressure. So the question now is, what causes the increase in tension in the muscles? I normally find that muscles don't just get tense or increase in, in their tension or get more tight for no reason at all. There's usually a, a cause to that, a reason for it. Your muscles are essentially a slave to your nervous system and your structure. If there's a problem in the mechanics or the problem in the way that your nervous system is running, then this can cause um, an increase in, in tension in the muscles. Therefore, to find out what's causing the tension, the low back, the hip, the knee, the ankle and the feet need to be assessed for their function, to see how they're moving, to see what the mechanics are like. Because if they are not moving very well or they are in a, in a bad position, then every time you make a step, it's gonna cause a distortion in the mechanics of the lower leg. As a result, the muscles can then start to increase in their tension or just become more tight to try and compensate or try and adapt to these ultra mechanics. So therefore, to really resolve this type of issue, you really need to get the mechanics looked at. And this is where a chiropractor comes in very handy because we are very highly trained in assessing the low back, the hip, the knee, uh, the ankle and the feet to see where the distortion is lying. Once we've found this distortion, we can then use what we call an adjustment to make corrections to that area to improve the mechanics and that over time will then decrease the tightness in your muscle. So my number one piece of advice for you if you're suffering with shin splints, and this is exactly what I would do if I was also suffering from this condition, is to go find a chiropractor that can assess the mechanics, make the corrections, and therefore get you back doing the sport or activity that you're wanting to get back to that this is stopping you from doing. Now, as promised, I said I was gonna go through an exercise that you can use. This exercise, in some cases, can resolve the issue, but quite often, 
it won't mainly because it's not going to get to the cause of the problem but it can certainly help and so what we're going to do with this exercise is, is to address that tightness those tight muscles and as i mentioned earlier the main set of muscles is the one at the back of your leg so the the posterior chain of muscles would tend to be the ones that would get tight so therefore i'm going to give you an exercise to stretch the back of your leg so that you can decrease that tension which should then decrease the tension of the muscle that's in involved that's pulling on that bone and therefore cause less stress in that area. So what you're going to do is find a wall. You're going to put the affected leg, you can do this on both sides, but let's start with the affected leg, uh, the side that you're getting the pain on. Just put the toes against the wall so it's at a slight angle. And then you're going to put the hands on the wall like in the press up position. And then you're going to bring your nose to one of your hands. Then you're going to come back, then bring your nose to the middle then come back and then bring your nose to the right hand and then come back. And then you can repeat that cycle anywhere between five and 10 times, whatever suits you. Just be careful not to make the problem worse. And if it does make it feel worse, you need to modify it. This is not the type of exercise that you want to work through the pain. So you can modify it either by changing the angle of your foot. So the further down to the floor it goes, the less of a stretch you're gonna get and the higher up the foot is, then the more of a stretch you're gonna feel. So just find the angle that works best for you. Then when you come forward, you don't necessarily want to hinge at the hips. You wanna bring the whole of your body towards the wall and you should feel a good stretch at the back of that leg. You don't wanna feel a really strong stretch, but you also wanna feel that you are stretching it. So again, you wanna just modify it to find the right amount of tension for you. If this doesn't work, if it doesn't have an effect, then again, I would stress, go see a chiropractor and uh, get this sorted for good. I'll be more than happy to help you. If you would like some more help with this type of issue, feel free to get in contact with me and we can have a chat about it. Otherwise, if you're not near me, then you can find an, a chiropractor that's local to you. I hope this is helpful and I hope that you do resolve this issue so you can get back to what you love doing. I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.